I guess most everybody's had some kind of nightmare in his life. I didn't know it at the time, but mine was just beginning. What I did know was that I was sick and I was scared and that I needed some kind of help. Counselor, could you wait, please? I don't want to go in there. Why do I have to go in there? It's a formality. It'll be over in a minute. Wait. You know I'm sick. I know I'm sick. Everybody knows I'm sick. I don't want to go on the stand. Just put me away somewhere. Do you want the cuffs off? Will that make you feel better? What do you think? Can you take them off? No, not out here. We'll take them off when we get inside the courtroom. Are we going to stand up all day, or is it possible to sit down? Sit down. Thanks. Sit down right here. Well, Frank, just uh, do me a favor. Relax, OK? <sighs> My wife in there? I don't know. I don't think so. Listen, I feel a little jumpy now. And uh, I don't want to have a breakdown in front of a million people. So why don't we get the judge out here? Will you please just try to calm yourself, Frank? Just this whole thing will take maybe 15 answer, minutes. Answer it is just a sanity why hearing. Why don't you answer my question? Why don't we get the Look, judge? Look, will you here? listen to me? I told you once before, this is a sanity hearing. Yeah. So you can get the I'm, help that I'm, you need. It's I'm, a formality. I'm in precarious shape right now. Right? I have people I know in there. If they start laughing at me, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to say. I can't say anything more to you. I don't write the rules in there. Mm -hmm. This is a formality. It'll be over in a minute. Okay. Can I go to the bathroom? Sure. Let's go. It may be hard to believe, but I want this. I know there's something wrong with me, and you take me to the place I want to go. Take her easy, Mr. Dahl. Everything's going to be all right. I'll tell you something else. If you took these handcuffs off me, stopped the car and got out, I'd get in the driver's seat and take myself down under my own power. That's right, everything's gonna be fine. How much further is it? Ah, uh, it's just a couple miles down the road here.
Frank Dole. This is court order of admission. Thank you. It's all yours. This way, Dole. Follow me. Mission, Frank Dole. You can sit down. Do you know why you're here? Yes. Well, I want you to tell me why you're here. I'm sick. I'm here to get well. Well, that's a good attitude, I must say. Thank you. Can you read this? Yes. I'll read it. The patient will be allowed to shave once a week. That's good. good, good, great. Look, now all you need to know is right here in this book. The schedules, the rules, and your introduction to life here. I want you to study it so that you'll know it as well as you know your own name. I will. Good. I'll tell you what I tell everyone. This is Hills Gate Hospital for the criminally insane. Just follow the rules, keep your nose clean, and stay out of deviant groups. Okay, I've never been much for groups. Guard, take Mr. Dole to J Ward. Yes, sir. This way, Dole. You can leave the door open. There's nothing to tear apart here. Get in. Where's the doctor? I was promised the hospital. Now, calm down, Ken. You're just doing It's only a routine. Get, get in, in there. there. Come on, get, get in, in there. Get in there. I'm sick and tired of making sense to a square. Get in disciplinary ward. Get the picture? All right, back in line. Up in the air. 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 Up in the
Frank Dole, transfer from J Ward. Thank you, Mr. Donahue. My name's Johnson with Mr. in front. I'm a charge guard. Listen, I've been here three days and four more besides me be watching you like the old watchbird. You keep your nose clean, you I've do fine. I've been here three days and I haven't seen a doctor yet. Something you better get straight right now. When I talk, you don't interrupt. I know how long you've been here. I got the records. I read what you've done. So don't you try giving me none of your lip, you understand? Yeah. I'd just like very much to see a doctor. You're going to see a doctor, all right. You're going to see everybody. What do you want? Get out of here. Get away from me. I want my chair. That's my chair. I, I'd like my chair. That's my chair. Hey, you parked in the man's chair. I, I want my chair. That, that's my chair. I use that chair. I look out the window from that chair. It's mine. That, that's my chair. Hey, did you hear me? You parked in the man's chair. I want my chair. Looks like you lost your throne, Pop. No, he has my chair. That's my chair. You ain't looking for another shot, are you? I want my own chair. That's my chair. Well, go and get another chair. They all look alike. I don't want another chair. I want that chair. Mr. Baker, you look after the new fish. Yeah, all right. Mr. Baker, you heard what I said? Yes, Mr. Miller. Well, do it now. That's all right, that's all right, sorry, relax, relax. Say, man, look here. If you want to survive in here, you better give the man back his chair, all right? Hey, hey, it don't mean a damn thing to you, do it? All right, Pops. small window there. Just wait here. I'll meet you on the other side. Okay. Doe! Frank! Over here. What's up? You need the guy's chair, right? Yo, you want to turn over the ropes? How long have you been here? Eleven years, eight months, and some days. I don't count the days no more. You do that when you first get in here. Eleven years? Mm-hmm. When is gonna let you out? Man, I ain't never getting out of here. Nobody ever does. It's a hospital, isn't it? They let you out when you're well. You must not be well yet. Get to shave once a week, shower the same. I'll tell you, this is not what I expected a hospital to be like. You, uh, you get mail twice a week, coming or going. You don't come and go too fast either, because the guards pass it around first, especially if it's got some juicy hot stuff in it. The guards read your mail? Mm, yeah. Don't worry about it. I don't like that. Yeah, you get used to it. They rotate the guards around, too, so that you get to meet all of them. Then you know which ones to avoid. Listen, Hoy, when do you, when do you see a psychiatrist? What psychiatrist? A psychiatrist. I was told that I was going to get therapy. And the only psychiatrist they got in here is a superintendent, and he don't see no patients. Wait a minute. I was confused at court, but I was told that I was going to see a doctor that I was going to get therapy. My lawyer told me that. And the only therapy you're going to get in here is boot leather therapy. What's that? you know it when it happens. Uh, 
Uh, let me see. Yes. That, that, that. Okay. Here, sign it. What's your name? Baker, Jim Baker. I've been here three days. It's the first conversation I've had with anybody. Sure isn't what I expected it to be like. He's scared, huh? Don't be afraid to admit it. Smart to be scared in here. Here you go. Put some on his plate. Hey, man, he don't eat it no way. He just plays in it, okay? okay that's all you're gonna get, Mitchell. That's it. That's it. Let's go. Let's move it. Come on, you guys. Did you do that to me, too? No, no, he's not gonna do that with you. Here, I got it. Here, here you go. There's that. And there's that. Here, come on. Let's go. Let's move. Come on, Pudge. Hey, I know what you have. Here, here, here. Come on, sweetheart. Come on, sweetheart. That's great. Won't you? Mitchell, go sit down. Two, please, Jim. Sure, that'll be 50 cents each or a dollar for both of you. Well, uh, can't we trade? Oh, no. <laughs> you ain't got nothing I want except the money for these sandwiches. Now, I got ham and I got cheese. Are you sure, darling? Man, I was sure the first time you came on to me, and I get sure every time I see you. Just the money. You're a vicious, vicious man. Mm-hmm. Just take the sandwiches and shove off, Queenie. <laughs> oh, uh... Well, I'm gonna hit the sack. Okay, Carlo, you got one.
God walks right over and changes the channel. Oh, yeah? I was watching the program. You change it back. My wife and I used to watch that program. Ah, you married, huh? Yeah. Got two girls. Got my own business, body shop. Ah, where are you from? Um, Eastchester. It's around Cochrane County, ain't it? Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Hey, I've been around there once or twice. I used to be a truck driver. They let you have your own business here? Hey, man, everybody got his own hustle in here. Now, you ain't got to buy. Then you get stuck with that slop they serve you down in the mess hall. Where do you get the stuff to make it with? Main dietary. What's that? Kitchen. Hmm. Best job in here. Get off the ward. Get to eat the same food the guards eat. <clears throat> I'll take one of those. Oh, hey, you ain't got to pay. You the new guy. First time out, you get this one free. After that, it's 50 cents. Thanks. Who is this guy? He's been following me around all day. What's his story? Who, old Mitch? I mean, he's so full of spiring, you can't even flush the toilet without help. What does he want from me? I don't know. Uh, maybe you remind him of his brother. What's so funny? Well, it seems that Mitch used to be a butcher. One day he got mad at his brother. Killed him, chopped him up in little pieces, and put him in the meat grinder and served it for hamburger. <laughs> Come get it, Mitch. Boy, that works every time. You know that? Well, you fell for that. Mitch wouldn't hurt a fly. Now, he's a little weird, I gotta admit that. In fact, his folks didn't want him around, so they brought him in for observation. That was uh, after the war. What are you doing here? I mean, you mind my asking? You don't seem sick to me. No, I guess I ain't no more. So what are you doing here? I wasted my old lady. What's that? I killed my wife. Oh, yeah. Tell me about it. Oh, no, no. This is the truth. It was some dumb argument. I didn't even know it until they picked me up. And they went to court, and some fool public defender convinced me to plead insanity. So I would come here instead of going to prison. Stay here for a few years while they found out if I was all right and then got a release. Man, that was a long time ago with no getting out in sight. What about you? So, um... Huh? Yeah, I... Sorry, I get the picture. I'm a little messed up right now. I'll be the first to admit it, but I'll be okay once I get a little help. Man, I'm gonna tell you something right now. <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you something an old dude told me a long time ago when I first got here. You ain't getting no help. You got to sort it all out for yourself. Well, I can't do that. I mean, that's why I'm here in the first place. You ain't got no choice. Well, then what's gonna happen to me? <laughs> Take a look around you. All right, Mitchell, pick it up. I said pick it up. Now, clean that damn mess up. Ah, 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 ah. See nothing, you don't want to know nothing. Just turn around. Come on, look around
Okay. Where are they taking her? Oh, we call her the peanut room. I ain't never been there, but I know I don't ever want to go. Neither do you. Man, no way. This is supposed to be a hospital for the sick, but I think it's a prison. Somebody's got to know about it. I haven't seen a doctor yet. Louise, there are things going on that I don't understand, and I have to talk to somebody. There was a man tonight named Mitchell. He was collecting candy and gum wrappers out of the trash cans. Well, the guards beat up on him so horrible, and he didn't do anything. And I'm scared since I saw it that something's going to happen to me. Tell somebody about this place, Louise. It must be very hard to believe, but I love you very much. Please, find some way of helping me. Please. Please get me out of here. I am going to be the best patient they ever have. For you, for us, and for little Donna. I love you, Frank. <laughs> hey, that's a crock. What do you think? Barnett. Yeah. I think we've got ourselves a first-class troublemaker here. I tell you, throw it away and burn it. I don't think so. Not this one. I'm gonna let the front office hassle this one. If they want to mail that letter, well, that's up to them. It's not our business. <laughs> He's going to tell it to the governor. Oh, what? Who does he think he is? Frank, I am not in a position to get you out of here. All I am is a minister of the church. I carry very little weight around here. And I'm not a psychiatrist. Well, then talk to somebody. I don't belong in here. With all of your talk about suicide last month, it's going to be very difficult to convince anybody of that. I was very depressed. Well, a lot of people get depressed, but they don't talk about suicide. Listen, I came here for help. I wanted to be here. I looked forward to a hospital, and I found out I'm in a prison for the rest of my life. I figured I might as well be dead. But why should I have to explain that to you? I don't have to explain that to anybody. You're right, Frank. You don't have to explain that to me. But you do have to explain that to the board if you want to get out of here. I want to see the board. I want to have a meeting with the board. Hold on just a minute. You came in here a very sick man. When was it? Three months ago? Four. You've been found breaking into mausoleums, and, and there's a report about you driving a steel rod into the ground by your father's grave. I don't want to talk about it. Frank, you're going to have to face these things. I'm not a psychiatrist, but the one thing I know is that if you're going to convince that board of anything, you're going to have to do exactly that. Now listen to what I'm saying and hear it. You must know that you did those things, and you must face the reason why. I don't want to. Well, then, you're going to be sick forever. Do you want that? No. Is it painful to think about these things? Yeah. It's frightening. Yeah. Well, it sounds pretty brutal, but what you're going to have to ultimately decide is which is more painful. To think about them or not to think about them. How do you do it? Well, um, to begin, you might um, just sit quietly for a few minutes every day and and let your mind go back over what you did, over what happened, and and uh, and, and try gently not to block it out. Are you a religious man? Uh, well, I thought perhaps prayer might, but, but never mind. Uh, 
Would you like some reading matter? On what? On psychology, on the way the mind works. I guess it wouldn't hurt. Good. Now, we can start with this and uh, read it, and we can talk about it again next week, if you like. Thanks. That door is always open, Frank. Hey, Dole. I need a favor. Let me have a couple of pints of cigarettes for supper time tonight. What for? You don't smoke. I'm serious. There's going to be a cockfight in our ward at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Who said so? I just heard the guards talking about it. Did you see a cockfight, Bill? No, but I know what they are. Hey, they're great fun, man. You can pick yourself up a lot of extras by making bets. Guards do it all the time. Listen, I never bend a horse or a dog. I'm sure as hell not going to bend a human being. OK, suit yourself. I thought you'd be interested, since uh, Jim is the odds-on favorite to win. Still not interested. <sighs> Who's the other guy? You seen him? Yeah, I seen him. Some little muscle head they got all doped up from Jaywar. You better hold it up if you don't want to get hurt. Does this go on a lot? Every time the guards want to get their kicks. How many times you done it? Hold it up. I really don't like to talk about it. So what are you doing it for? Because in here you do what you have to do, and it's as simple as that. Feeling like a champ? Let's do it. Them squirrels is getting restless. We got a lot of money riding on you, boy. You don't have to worry. Can't afford to lose a fight in here. You coming? It's not my kind of thing. Where's your pride? This is your reward. You there. street fighters to ever come out of Chicago. Now, he ain't as big as you are, so don't put him away too quick. I mean, you know, slap him around and make it look good. Make it look good. Yeah. Now, any more of you boys want to make a bet? Get it down now, because we're fixing to start. Mr. Stoneman, shut the maestro up there. We don't need no music for this. Can you sleep a little bit? Oh, I've got enough. Okay, boys, let her rip. Opponent. 
something for you? Did you see what they did to me? Yeah. I mean, they're the ones that's crazy not me. Did you see what they did to yeah. me? You want this? Oh, oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have had it. I mean, that's it. I have had it. Man, I ain't going to this. I ain't going to, I ain't going to this no more. Bizarre, this entire court today, huh? Yeah. Well, uh, mind your manners. Buzz off. Uh, Mr. Donnegan, you know what time it is? What? You know what time it is? Quarter two. Oh, yeah. I don't want to go in there bleeding. I don't want to be late either. They all wait. Yeah, but it doesn't look good. Nah, nothing's going to happen anyway, kid. Oh, yeah? That's what you think. There you go. That's another nickel. What for? It was a rush job, two bits. Let's go, Mr. Dole. Aren't 
you're gonna wear a shirt. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sit down, Mr. Dole. I got Frank Dole here. I'll check on it. Let me get it. Mr. Dole from D Ward. Hello, Frank. Scott, please. <coughs> thank you. Well, Frank, how are you? Fine, thank you, sir. <coughs> see, you've been here now about two years. No, 26 months. Two, uh, two days ago, it was 28 months, sir. <coughs> this is your first real staff evaluation. Oh, uh, excuse me, I had one 10 months ago. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, I forgot about that. You probably see a lot of people. How do you feel about your last evaluation? Uh, not terribly well. Uh, I was under a lot of pressure. Uh, I guess I wasn't really ready. Frank, are you ready now? Yes, sir. I've been doing a lot of work on my head. I really know a lot of things now that I didn't know before. I really feel like I'm ready. How have you been sleeping? Fine, no problem. Frank, I know it's difficult, but try to relax. OK. After all, we're here to help you, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, Frank and I have done a lot of good work together lately. Yes, we have your memos, and we also have copies of Frank's letters. Well, now, Frank, tell us what you've been up to. Well, since you're the superintendent here, it's probably all stuff that you're aware of. Yes, of course, but we'd like to hear it from you. I'm trying to see where my head is at. Right. Do you know where your head is at, Frank? In the past 10 months, I've been mainly into studying. I've been reading just about everything I could get my hands on, books on psychology, books on all kinds of self-help. Uh, I've read a couple of things on semantics. I've been meditating, and Reverend Weiler's helped me with all of those things. Yes, we're all aware of your efforts there. Uh, I've reached a point now where I really feel like I'm doing something constructive with my time. I'm not sitting around moping anymore. And I'm able to face a lot of the things I've done. But what, what I'm really excited about is this. I've instituted some training programs for the inmates. For the patients. Yeah, for the patients. Uh, for example, I have this one here on auto body work, which was my field before I came here. I have letters of encouragement from people all the way as far as Dadeville. I have, I have from my county. It's oh, corporate. very interesting, but we already have an OT department, Frank. No, no, I'm not talking about occupational therapy. All we've really got is the ceramic shop and the print shop and art and woodworking. Yeah, these are hobbies. What I'm talking about is a career that a man can walk out of this place and go into. I'm afraid we just don't have the budget to implement these ideas. Especially since out of the 1,400 men we have here, only five were released last year. And out of those five, two are back with us. Well, I wouldn't be back. I'm well now, and I want to get out of here and get a job and go back to my wife and kids and make up to them what I, what I owe them. Well, I'm sure you do. But what makes you think you're ready for that? Well, I just know it. All the things I told you about, all the work I've been doing. I'd like to hear something about the discoveries you've been making about yourself. OK, what would you like to know? Well, let's start with your suicide attempts. Do you know what brought that on? Yes, I do. <sighs> Everything was crashing in on me. There was a lot of pressure in my head. And I didn't know any way of stopping it. So I finally decided that the only way to stop it was to stop myself from feeling it. And now, do you think of suicide now? No, I don't. That was all part of my father's dying, the way he did, and his last words to me, which was the thing that put me right over the edge. One of the police reports states that you went out to the cemetery, that you brought out a long metal rod, and you punched a hole down through the ground next to your father's grave. Oh, that wasn't it at all. Well, to do something like that, you must have really hated him. No, no, no. I loved him. I was trying to talk to him. And I know it sounds crazy now, but what I was trying to do was to clear a passage through the earth so that he'd hear me. 
Uh, I wanted to tell him that I loved him, and I couldn't accept the fact that he was dead. Can you now? Yes, I can. You see, when he was sick, I was very bad to him. Really bad. But when he was dying, I felt guilty about it, and I told him I was sorry, and he said that he'd never forgive me. I'll never forgive you, he said, and then he died before I could tell him I loved him, before I could explain myself to him. Well, they said that you were seen lurking around funeral parlors, that you went to a stranger's funerals and made trouble. I just wanted to get a message to my father. I'd, I'd talk to the dead person, and I'd ask him to take a message to my father to tell him that I loved him. This is making you uncomfortable, isn't it? A little bit. Why is that? Well, I don't know how you guys are taking all this. I mean, I don't know what goes through your heads when I say this to you. Is it all true? Yes, it is. Then why should we make anything else of it? I don't know. Yet you say that you're not upset about this anymore. No, I'm not. In a letter here to your wife, you say that the print shop is busy making up personal stationery for the medical staff, that the guard's food is much better than the patient's food. Are you upset about those things? So what has all this got to do with my father? Do you know that if... The guards had better food than the patients. That would be a violation of the statutory codes. The guards do get better food than the patients. Would you say that is a fact or your opinion? I don't know. But most interesting of all, you mention in a letter here a patient named Mitchell. You recall him? Yes, he died on the ward about two years ago, didn't he? Of a heart attack? But Frank says here that the man died because of a beating administered by a number of the guards on the ward. A mass beating. Do you still believe that, Frank? Do you still believe the man died from a beating? But you don't sound sure. We'd like you to tell us what you really feel. No, he uh, died from being sick, passed away. Heart attack, actually. Yeah, heart attack. He got sick and died of a heart attack. Here, Frank, why don't you uh, take some of this water? He died by being beaten to a bloody pulp by four guards. That's what he died of. You seem to be getting upset. Yeah, I'm getting upset. Why don't you guys ever come into this place? Why don't you ever take a look around and see what's going on? We have guys being beaten, killed. We get no help of any kind. We're left to rot in there and die. Don't take my word for it. Ask any of the other patients. But, Frank, I must point out to you that Hillsgate is not being evaluated here. We haven't committed any crime. You have. You're the one who must pass muster here. When and if you do that, you're a free man. And after that point, you can go out and shout your message to the multitudes. I only have one message, sir. Stop the beatings, stop the murders, and stop the corruption. We also have an obligation to protect you from yourself. Do you honestly think that you're ready to leave Hill's Gate? Hold on, Frank! Frank! Sedation! You come and spend a couple of days up there with me, yeah? Come and spend a couple of days with me. Come and see what Easy goes on. Jonathan. I guarantee, I guarantee that after two days, you'll be calling for your mother. You'll be wetting your pants and calling for your mother. Easy. talking about? I thought you were gonna back me up. You just sat there and let them chew me apart. Look, Frank, let's get one thing straight. You're the one that jumped Dr. Brink at that meeting, not me. He attacked me! No, you attacked him. He used a known technique in these evaluation conferences. Listen, Wiley, he was forcing me to lie. As long as I kept on lying, I would have gotten off the hook. Isn't that right? Isn't that what would have happened? I don't know what would have happened. How can I answer that question? Well, I'm telling you, that's what would have happened. And you would have just sat there and let him continue to force me to lie, wouldn't you? That's right, I wouldn't have said anything. Terrific, an honest answer. Would you like to know the reason why? Yeah, I'd love to know the reason Because why. that's the way these conferences are conducted. They're designed to put you under pressure to see how you behave yourself. I didn't design them, and I don't like them. So what were you doing there? Well, I'd like to think I was giving you some moral support. Well, you can forget that little fantasy. 
Let me tell you something, Frank. Just because I don't conform to this role you're designing for me doesn't mean that I'm your arch enemy. I'm not a crusader. If that's what you want to do with your life, fine. God bless you. But it hasn't gotten you very far up to now, has it? The one thing I think I know how to do is how to help people cope with things as they are. I'd like to think that I've been some help to you in that respect. I want another hearing. I can't help you there. Well, then what can you do for me? Just what I've been doing. Listen, Wilder, all I know is that every horror that I talked about at that hearing yesterday, you were aware of. And with all your fine speeches, you know how to keep your mouth shut when it's convenient. I'm sorry you feel that way. I am, too. I'm not going to die in this place. Business. 50 bucks. 50 bucks? 50 bucks, you can get it. 50 bucks for one blend? It's what we need, ain't it? You trust me? I don't see where we got no choice. Who is that guy? Who is he? He's an outsider. Been working here for 20 years, but he's a hustler. He would sell his mother for 50 bucks. It's a one by four, not two by four. What is it? It's a towel rack. Can you make it? Yeah, but it'll cost you. How much? Two bottles. One, but I'll make it almond. Yeah? Yeah. It's a deal. I played that thing already. About three or four, what? Yeah, but every night. You don't understand. If it wasn't for that song, I would probably end up in a mental institution. <laughs> you got it? You got the sauce? you guys were up to before I even came down here. Hey, stupid, it took you two weeks to earn that. Savor it. Savor it. Okay, go stand by the door, okay? Mm. Man, this thing is awfully small. You sure we can get through here? Sure. I guess you were if I can get through here. Raise your shoulders, fine. Okay. Exhale. Push. Oh, wait a minute. Don't force it. Don't force it. Man, there's no way I'm gonna get through this thing unless I lose some weight or something. Can't make it fit. I hear lard is pretty good.
Oh, man, I just can't get this one shoulder through. And I'm so damn hungry, them patients' food's starting to look good to me. How much have you dropped so far? Oh, about 10, 11 pounds, but I'm still dropping. Listen, I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a personal question. All right, shoot. Okay. <clears throat> when I first got here, how come you spoke to me? What do you open up to me for? I mean, there's been a lot of people come here since me, and I've never seen you do that with anybody else. Number two, why'd you get me that job in the kitchen? I don't know. I really, honestly, don't know. I think that I saw a little bit of me in you when I first got here. You know, like you know you had just walked into hell. Hmm. Hey, uh, what about that 50 bucks you owe Morelli? Well, we got 42 now. Hey, man, when Morelli says 50 bucks, he means 50 bucks. I think in two or three days we're gonna have the rest. Listen, you guys, I make the best pies in the whole state. Maybe the whole country. <laughs> Every time I make them, they get better and better. We're even getting famous. I mean, when the visitors come here, they always ask about my pies. Hey, Mr. Morelli, how's your pies? Got any samples? <laughs> even the brass, when they come up here on inspection, they don't care about you fruitcakes. They just ask about it. What do you want it? You got it all? Yeah. 50. Yeah. Sure have a nice business here, Mr. Morelli. What are you complaining about? You got the dough out of the sandwiches you hustled out of here in the first place. Put it in my desk drawer, top right. Where's ours? I told you, put it in my desk drawer, top right. that break. You know what I was thinking about while I was standing over there? Well, you know, my folks used to come visit me. You know, my mother and sister would come in and I would Tell them how they used to beat me and make me fight. My mother said I ought to pay more attention to the rules. Then when I tried to explain it to my sister, she said I was always a wild kid. So then I used to try to get them to help me get out of here. They stopped coming. It's a hell of a thing, ain't it, when your own folks give up on you. What's that? So can we just get a new tenant in the building? Hold it down there now, Mr. Olson. I have to wait for my children. Hold it down there now. You don't understand. I have to wait for my children. You don't understand. I have to wait for my children. Hold it down there now, Mr. Olson.
wait a minute. What? Something's wrong. Something's weird. What? I don't know. Wait a minute. <laughs> Man, we ain't getting out of here. We ain't getting out of here tonight. We ain't getting out of here tomorrow night. We ain't never getting out of here. Why? Another bar in here. Keeps turning with the saw. Wait a minute, I hear it up here. I'm pretty sure I to steal or something. In fact, I bet you all these bars are made like that. Yeah, there's another one inside of it. And it's set in ball bearings. That's Rod Morelli. You know exactly what's gonna happen! Then these whacks when I beat the stop it! Get in! I'm gonna burn this place down and I'm gonna kill him! Now get off of me! Get him! I'm gonna kill him! Why do you kill nobody? Just be cool. Man, the guards come in and find out we're trying to get out of here. That's gonna be it for both of us, you understand? Now just be cool. I'll tell you what you're gonna do. You're gonna lay here and you're gonna keep your eye on that door, you understand? I'm taking this polish and I'm covering up this mess. And that's gonna be in there, you hear? That's gonna be it. Hey, Carlo, go keep an eye out for Morelli, will you? Keep an eye out for Morelli, will you? Get out of here! What are you doing with that syringe? I'm fixing Mr. Morelli's famous pies. Yeah, but what's that you're putting in them? Water. You're putting water in his pies? Yeah. I don't forget that $50 saw blade. Every time I do them, like the molasses in the shoes, I take off a butt. <laughs> you the one that did that? Yeah. <laughs> I think this I think this one's worth about three. What do you think? <laughs> oh, three at least, man. I don't forget anything anymore. Now let's everybody say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Say bye bye to your sweetie. Thanks. Today's the day. What's up? Where are you going? I'm getting out, silly. Who said so? I got the papers. Hey, you know about that? Yeah, I don't know about it. Huh. Take it easy. All right, you kid. And you write me like you said, huh? Hey, when did he get sprung? How come he's getting out of here? Oh, man, he's got a season pass. He's been out twice before. He'll be out for about a month. Then you look at some high school kid and fall in love and he's right back. Merry Christmas, you fruitcake! Merry Christmas, Mr. Morelli. Wait till you get your chops into this. Here we go. Oh, those are beautiful. Oh, oh, oh. oh Here you go. That beautiful, huh? You ready for that? Yeah. Here we are. I don't know. Let me try this. Like chocolate pudding. Wait a minute. Just a minute. Something went wrong with that. 
Something happened to my pies. What happened? I don't know. I don't understand. Look at them. They're, they're like all watery. Yeah, you probably lost your touch, Mr. Morelli. I didn't lose my touch. I've been making these pies for 20 years. I didn't lose my touch. I think somebody's been messing around with my pies. Oh, you think somebody's been messing with them? Yeah. Hey, Carla, who's been messing with Mr. Morelli's pies? Man, I don't know a darn thing. He don't know nothing, Mr. Morelli. You probably lost your touch. Happens to everybody. Just don't know. Hey, Carl. Come on. You play with him for a while. Let's go, big mama. You'll miss your bus. All right. Hey, I'll treasure this. Bye-bye. So long, you darling weirdos. I like to think that I'm gonna miss all this, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> Merry Christmas.
Jeez, Frankie, I got a little plastered today. What else is new? I don't know. Thanks a lot. Inside, Mr. Dole. Right. You're playing with your toys, huh? Yes. I, uh, heard that you saved Donahue from a haircut this afternoon. And yeah. Not a lot of guys would have done that. What made you do it? I don't know. It just happened. Oh, uh, yeah? Well, it was a mistake. No, it wasn't. It was instinct. Benton was running after Donahue with a chair over his head screaming, so I dropped him. I don't want to meddle. Yeah, we sure ain't getting no medals. We might even lose a few friends behind it. Look what I found today. Yeah, I've been watching you collect them things for over a year now. Where you been getting them from? Oh, everywhere. This one, uh, I found in Morelli's jacket when he went to the bathroom. This one, DeSalvo left with a pack of cigarettes on a sink counter. This one, I don't know where I got. They ain't got no markings on them, so what are they good for? Open doors? What doors? I don't know. Every time I go past the door, I try one. Sooner or later, I'm going to find the right key and the right door. Then what? Then we walk on out of here. I'm not going to rot in this place like Carlo. We're going to wait, make wait, it. Wait, 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 hold. What did you say? We're going to make it next time. Frankie, you said we. Why don't you get something straight right now? Next time you say we in relationship to you and me getting out of here, you drop the we, you got it? I mean, would you tell me, what am I going to do once I get out of here? Spend the rest of my life running like a wanted, crazed murderer, huh? Man, I was doing all right while I was in here, and before you came in here. Man, I must have been a fool to let you convince me that we could get out of here and make it. Well, I ain't going to be no fool no more, you hear me? I mean, I've had it. I've had it. So from now, when you think of you and me getting out of here, you leave the me out, because I've had it. Do you hear me?
Charlotte. Look who's come home again. Hey, Frank. it's the punchy man. How are you? It's okay, it's Take okay. care of him. He hasn't been eating too well. Welcome home. Thank you. Did you just get in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Donahue, just now. Uh-huh. Want something to eat? Yeah. So you're still making the same lousy potatoes. Huh? Yeah, it's the same. It's the same batch. I believe it. Hey, uh... You're gonna have to get some new action. That's an item over there. You don't think I was exactly alone all that time, do you? Why'd you get caught, jerk? Lucky, I guess. Get tough. C'est la vie. Mr. Johnson. Just couldn't stay away from us, could you? Serving line is closed. What do you mean closed? What difference does it make? I gotta eat like everybody else. I can't serve it. Who are you anyway? You're not from this ward. Look, man, I'm hungry. I got to eat. So would you put some food on the tray and shut up? <laughs> do me a favor. You want some food? Talk to the guards. I don't make the rules around here. Are you gonna give me some food or not? I can't give you any food. Don't you think I'm pretty enough to serve? Don't you think I'm pretty enough to kiss? I think you're fine. Now, will you put your arms down, please? What'd you call me? What? I said, what did you call me? I didn't call you anything. Look, man, I heard you. I know exactly what you said. Now, what did you call me? God! God! This man insulted me, called me dirty names. It's all a racket. This man insulted me, called me dirty names. He's lying, Mr. Johnson. Well, it's terrible. What'd you call him? I didn't call him anything. He's got problems. Well, now, one of you's lying. I ain't gonna get in on it. You're just gonna have to settle it between yourselves. They use you away. A cockfight? That's okay with me. I'm looking at a cockfight with this maniac. Oh, yeah. You gonna fight. Sure. Mr. Johnson, you don't want to fight your man. Well, he doesn't have nothing to say about it. They stand there calling each other liars, and they're going to settle it. Well, uh, I keep hearing him say that he don't want to fight him. Suppose I'll fight your man. He ain't my man. But that's an interesting idea. All right, Jay Ward, tomorrow. What was that all about? I want you to know I had nothing to do with it went down in the mess hall. Doesn't matter? It does to me. I told them when I first come here not to count me in their games. Is that all? I owe you. For what you did that day, but that don't make me your pal, understand? Oh, yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way. I mean, why should my saving your life change our relationship? Kid, for my money, you don't even belong in here. I'm telling that to you privately, because you ain't never going to hear me repeat it. As long as you are, I can buy the book. Clear? Clear as a bell.
Johnny, he was just buttonholed me in the bathroom to inform me that he didn't have anything to do with what happened in the mess hall this afternoon. Which pretty much confirms my suspicion that it is a setup. So you weren't going to fight again? What are you waiting for? For me to say that I had something to do with it? I didn't. I didn't ask you to get into this. I didn't ask for your help. And I don't want your protection. Finish. If you're waiting for me to thank you, you're gonna have to wait until hell freezes over. Dumb. God, is this dumb. Frank? Yeah. I'll need some more spuds in there. Some of them down here. That is real heavy. Don't let us down. You didn't bet nothing, did you? Yeah, I did. I always do. Why? What's wrong? What do you mean, what's wrong? Ain't nothing wrong. What's the matter with you? What are you looking at me like that for? I didn't do nothing. This was your idea. It's on your head. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Time for that inspection, Baker. Come on, boy. Clean up day. Spuds. Get right on him, Mr. Morelli. I'll get right on him, Mr. Morelli. I could be a seal barking in here the way you guys listen to me. What are you doing? Coming, Mr. Morelli.
Miss Jim. You should have been here an hour ago. I ask you a question. Where's Jim? I don't know where he's at. Hey, Doe, bring me another hunk of that apple pie. Coming. Here's a pie, sir. I'll take a piece of that pineapple. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'll take the same. How'd the fight go? Not sure. A lot of money exchange hands? The only reason I ask is I had five bucks on it myself. What fight would that be, Mr. Dole? The cockfight over on J. Ward. Cockfights is against the rules, Mr. Dole. I'm going to kill you. Where's Jim? What happened? Frank, I don't know where the hell he's at. Look, he lost, OK? OK, now let me go. What do you mean he lost? OK, the guy wipes up the ward with him. He don't even raise a hand to defend himself. It's, it's like he didn't want to fight back. They worked them over? Six of them. Took them up to our ward. Give him a shot of spirene, and they put the boots to him. Who? Johnson, DeSalvo, all of them. Donna, you? Oh, he was out in the hall. He knew what the hell was going on. And everybody just stood around. Nobody said anything. Oh, we uh, we stood around. All right. We turned our backs. And you were there? I did what everybody else did, Frankie. I turned my back. I did what you'd have done if you'd have been there. I did what we always do. You've been standing there. I just got here. What's the matter with you? You're getting like the rest of these paranoids. I don't know. I'm just jumpy. I just talked to little Sam. He's got an in with one of the guards up in T-Ward. They got Jim in the isolation room. Well, what did he say about him? Is there any news? Is he OK? It's his head. He hasn't come to yet. But he should be OK in a couple days. To him. All of a sudden, about a month ago, he just he stopped being there. He just didn't care anymore, Frank. It happens a lot in here. I've been here a long time. I've seen it. it happened to Jim. Just didn't care. He wouldn't have been happy on the outside. He wasn't happy on the inside. So he just gave up. I don't understand that. I don't know how somebody can just give up. Well, everybody's different. What about you? How come you're so happy all the time? You know, if I was on the outside, they'd grab me and have me in the loony bin just like that. <laughs> so you, you really like it here? You could just stay here forever with no complaints? I don't know if you understand what I mean, Frank, but I've got a good deal here. I got everything I want, everything I need. This is the best home I've ever had. And that's my philosophy, man. 
That's no philosophy. That's a cop-out. Giving up isn't a philosophy. Yeah, but it keeps me going. When I was a kid, I caught a raccoon. I kept him in a cage in the basement. And I made this lock out of two wires that he'd never be able to figure out. And he kept playing with it and playing with it, and I'd watch over in the corner. And after about a week and a half, he got out. He didn't know he couldn't make it. That's my philosophy. Yeah, it's been a long day. Feeling, Frank? I'm okay. I didn't get any sleep last night. Yeah, that's the way it goes. It can happen just like that. With all the aggravation I get around this joint, it could happen to me when I'm reaching for a bottle of sauce. What are you talking about? All right, you guys, let's go. Hey, you got yourself a new job, kid. From now on, you take over Jim's work. What are you talking about? He's gonna be okay. Not in this life. I thought you knew. Your pal died a couple hours ago. I heard it coming in. Heart attack. Can you believe in a big ox like that with a heart attack? Hey, get me a cup of coffee. I'll get your damn coffee in a minute. I gotta take care of him. Come on, kid. Come on. Let's take a walk. Come on. Frank. Cool, Frank. You can bring the whole thing down. Cool. Pull yourself together, Frank. They can't get away with us. They can't be allowed to get away with us. They can't get away with us, Frank. Somebody's got to tell people what the hell is going on in here. Who's going to tell them, Frank? Who's going to tell them? You? Who are you going to tell? The court? They sent you up here. Your wife? Hell, she doesn't even write to you anymore. Frank, <laughs> you're in a state hospital for the criminally insane. There's nobody on the outside that's going to believe one damn thing you've got to say. Come on, Jack. Mr. Donahue, can I ask you a question? What are you doing in a place like this? You don't seem like the other guards to me. Don't count on that. No, I'm serious. You, you're better than this place. Kid, I got nine years invested nice here. Maybe if I was a gambling man, but I'm not. You're an honest man, Mr. Donahue. The kind of man that doesn't renege on his debts. Okay, now I know why I've been getting center cuts of meat. You still feel like you owe me? That's good. You still feel that way? Go on. I want to get a letter out of here, unopened. Who to? My wife. You still think you've got any secrets from us after all these years? What is it, six, seven? Seven, yeah. I want to get a package back to me, and I want to make sure that it's unopened and not bought over. 
I can't do that, kid. You know better. Sorry. No way. Well, how about if I let you look at it? I don't think so. Maybe if I opened it. Okay, but only you. Where is the letter? You won't regret it, and I promise that you will not get involved. I don't believe you. But I do pay my bills. Consider it paid. That's good. After this, you got no more call on me. Even up. Come on in. Pineapple pie? Can I get you some? No pie for me. No pie. I'm supposed to see you, Mr. Donahue? Oh, yeah. There's a package here for you. Over there. Sign for it. Good. Thanks, Mr. Donahue. Anything interesting? Nah, uh, mostly clothes, some eats, peanut butter, crackers, that sort of stuff. I finally got just what I wanted. A miniature camera, a tape recorder, an eight millimeter movie camera, and enough tape and film to tell the world. seal the tape recorder and still carry it around, I put it inside an old radio. was easy, just fit into a cigar package. You see, Irish had tucked him to the toilet. He walked away from him. All of a sudden, he jumped up and come running after him. Well, that was the wrong move. I want to tell you it was. So you shined your boots on him? I mean, we put the boots to him. Did it do any good? Well, you know, maybe for about a month. Hmm. Then we had to do it all over again. You know, in the end, why, he finally wound up like Mitchell on the T Ward. You remember Mitchell, don't you? They rode down heart attack. His boots had done it. Well, them boots will catch up with you if you don't watch out. Pretty damn good coffee, kid. Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. Would you like a cigar? 
Yeah, I don't mind if I do. May I? Yeah, help yourself. Hiding the movie camera was a little bit more complicated. I cut a nest for it in a piece of foam rubber, and then I hid it in a little pillow. And the guards were used to seeing us carry objects around as kind of security blankets, so they didn't pay much attention. This is it. What is? It's an ashtray. Can you do it? Yeah, I guess so. Okay, I need two of them exactly alike. Then I want two sandwiches. You do it right, I'll give you four sandwiches. I don't want four, I want two. Okay. How long can you do it in? Seven days. Can you make it five? Yeah. I don't know, Frank. Look, you're in there every day cleaning, right? Yeah. All I want you to do is put it on the desk. Let it sit there for a couple of weeks. I want him to get used to it. I don't know. Hey, Frank, you know you don't have to bribe me to do you a favor. But since you went to all the trouble, uh, I don't want to hurt your feelings. I'll, I'll do it for you, Frank. I'll, I'll take care of it. Okay. filmed the things that went on in the ward. The dope, the homosexuality, the brutality. 
For example, what you're seeing here is the way the guards would zonk some guy a triple dose of Thorazine and then bet on how many seconds it would take to knock him out. Like a cigar, Mr. Morelli? No, I never touch him, kid. I plan to live a long life. Yeah, life's good, isn't it? You bet. And you know what I really like? What's that? When I see a guy like you change over the years into a all right hombre. You understand? Yeah, thank you. Hey, you've come a long way. Thanks. So how come I'm still here, Mr. Morelli? Shelter. Out there. Stalky dog, right, kid? Beats me. I don't know why you want to make a switch, Frank. You already got one up there. Hello. I won't trust you. Turn it over. Hmm. Carl, it's a wireless mic. If I put that in the guards room, we'll be able to hear everything they say. What do you want to do that for, Frankie? Oh, be interesting. I'm not interested in, in what they got to say. I don't know. I gotta, I gotta think this over, Frank. Think it over. No, no, Frankie, I really got to think this one over. I understand. Don't do anything you don't want to do. I'll let you know, okay, Frankie? Yeah. Greenberg, I want you to check under all them ovens. I want you to check all the freezers. Wes, you check the pantry. Shannon, make sure he's clean, and I mean clean. Clean he will be. Oh, Mark, joy, boy, you've done this before. In that position, huh? Come, 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 come on, come on. What the hell's going on? What are you guys doing in here? You ever seen him skulking around in here trying to stash something? Why'd he stash anything in here? Come on, come, 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 come on, come on. Keep your mouth shut about this. Come on, back to feeling those spuds, huh? Fall someone. Funny one. You know, you'd save yourself a hell of a lot of problems. You just tell us where you stash that stuff.
Hey, wait a minute. Let's try it again. I want to talk to you. A little bit of excitement down in Maine Dietary tonight. You don't happen to know anything about it, do you? Why should I, Frank? I've always been very good to you, Carlo. Whenever you needed anything, you didn't do without. Who ratted on me about the ashtray? I didn't tell him nothing. Who did then? Say nothing to him, Frank. I didn't say nothing. Who I... ratted on me about the ashtray? I didn't, Frank. What did you tell him? One guard, maybe, I told him. He ain't gonna say nothing. Nothing's come back to you, has it, Frank? What did you tell him? Look, Frank, you're trying to make too many changes around here for me. This is my home, Frank. And I don't like the changes you're trying to make. Just leave me alone, okay, Frank? Leave me alone, will you, Frank? Get out of here, Carla. Go to bed. I'm sorry, I done it, Frank. Terrific. Go to bed. I ain't sorry. Can I get you something, Mr. Johnson? No. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll be late coming on the floor tonight. I gotta clean out the meat locker. I'll pass the word. Thanks a lot. Morelli, I'm not gonna make the dinner shift tonight. They got me on latrine duty. What do you want me to do? Talk to him? Nah, that'll probably just make him uptight. You know the way they've been about me lately. Whatever you say, kid. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Morelli. That's enough. Give it a stir. Hey, I'm going into town till four. I'll see you then. Steam pipes and power lines could only lead to one place, the power plant. And the power plant at Hillsgate was outside.
finally, after I don't know how many petitions, I was certified competent to stand trial on the original charges. I felt very confident that if I told my story and there were people there who would listen, that there was no way that I wouldn't get out of Hillsgate. Where do I know you from? Right here. Huh. There are a few of us still remember you. You tore this place up pretty good one time. Remember yeah. that? Huh? Yeah. Long time ago. Yeah. You're all better now, huh? I'm fine, thanks. That's good. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. Your attorney's right inside. Okay. This way, Mr. Gold. Wife isn't here? She, uh, she was supposed to. There, there was a problem. Uh, later, I think she's coming. How would you characterize his ability to understand and to reason when he first came to Hillsgate? I don't think he understood much of what he had done, but uh, he's come a long way since then, a very long way. Do you categorically rule out the possibility that he might have been uh, faking the symptom, that is, faking his insanity? It's very unlikely. Well, could he not have been able to fool even you, perhaps, in an effort to evade responsibility for the uh, bizarre antisocial acts he committed? I, I don't think so. Well, then, how would you characterize his present state of mind? I beg pardon? You said he'd come a long way. Are the symptoms then completely gone? Is he cured? Well, I think he's rational. Well, thank you. You may cross-examine counsel. I'd like to repeat the question. Do you think he's cured? Yes, I think so. Reverend Weiler, you're a minister of the church. Yes, I am. With psychiatric training? No. Medical training? No. Well, then perhaps you have a degree in psychology, a PhD? Uh, no, sir. Well, surely a master's degree in psychology? No, none of them. Then on what do you base your assessment of the defendant's state of mind? Observation and uh, sensitivity to people and experience. Yeah. With all of your intensive study in the field, if the decision were left to you, would you recommend he be returned to society to walk out of this courtroom a free man? I don't know if I can answer that. Your Honor, I object. I object on the grounds of question. Let's have it quiet in here. Jury. Quiet. Thank you. Listen, you have to explain something to me because I still don't understand it. Why aren't I pleading guilty? Even if they find me guilty, I will have already served my time. I can walk out of here a free man. Look, look, we have a perfectly good defense. You are mentally unhinged at the time. Ergo, legally not guilty. I changed my mind. I want to take the stand. Why? Because there are things about Hillsgate I want to talk you about. You can't. Why? You are on trial here for certain acts you committed. You're on trial, do you understand? Look, we don't have much time. Don't open your mouth about anything. I'm not putting you on the stand. We'll see what happens. Look, Frank, I'm defending you from certain charges. I'm not interested in anything that's not directly related. Neither is the court. Whatever may have happened out there at Hillsgate is irrelevant. The only question is, what was your state of mind at the time you committed those acts? There is no doubt in my mind that at the time, he had no knowledge of the gravity of the acts he was committing. In other words, he was insane. As legally defined, yes. By so describing him, you are, of course, referring to his mental state at the time of his admission to Hillsgate. Yes. And subsequently. Subsequently. You mean prior to the care and treatment he received at your hospital? Yes. And right now, up to the present. The man is dangerously volatile. He needs help. There's no guarantee at this time that his violent reactive state won't reoccur. 
To throw him upon society now I've spent be... a total of two hours with this man in the past seven years. He doesn't know me from Adam. He's throwing around a lot of technical terms, but he's no more qualified to be up there than Reverend Weiler is. He's no psychiatrist. He talks about Hill's Gate as if it's a hospital. I tell you, it's a sewer. There are men killed there. There are men beaten to death there. And I've got, I've got the tapes, and I've got the film to prove it. He knows what I'm talking about. Look at his face. Instruct your client that unless he controls himself in these proceedings that I'm going to have him forcibly removed from the courtroom. Mr. Dole, there's someone here to see you. you should hear what I have to say. Yeah, well, I just want you to know that I'm well again. Frank, I started a divorce action. I want you to know that I'm well, that I'm going to get out of that place, that I'm going to get a job, and that I want to take care of you and the kids. Frank, I can't go back to that life. I have a new life now, and that's it. I want to explain something to you. I did you a favor by not appearing in court. I want you to understand that. Your lawyer asked me to testify, and I told him that I would. And then when I told him what I had to say, he said that I wouldn't be helping you. And that's why I wasn't there. I really want you to understand that. Do you understand? Yeah, I understand. You see, we... We just don't do each other any good. I, I obviously, I'm not helping you. And, and with you, I'm, I'm just scared all the time. And I can't, I can't live that way. You see, I just can't do it. Does, does that make any sense to you? Sure. I don't know what else to say. There's nothing else to say. Do you want to move, Bob? They're ready for you, Mr. Dole. This was very hard for me! Thank you. The defendant will please rise. Read in the above entitled action, find the defendant not guilty on all three counts by reason of insanity. The defendant will remain in custody while the court studies the remaining <coughs> indictments against him. Does your honor have any idea how long that might be? I would imagine a matter of hours. The court will stand in recess until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. You know what time it is? A little after seven. Did anybody come for me or leave a message? Your lawyer just arrived. Now get your things together, Frank. You're getting out of here. Hello, Mr. Gold. What are you doing? I'm sorry, Frank. Yoder came down a couple of hours ago. You were acquitted on the charges, but the judge found you still mentally incompetent. Not ready to leave Hillsgate. Let's go, sir.
Deal me in, Charlie. I'm only kidding. Play. What's the matter, Charlie? <laughs> So, did you miss me? Yeah, Frankie. I didn't miss you. You know what they got out there walking around the streets? Ladies. You know what I ate? Two hamburgers. Have a piece of gum. What's going on? Word's out about what you said in court, Frank. What did I say in court? I didn't say anything in court. What do you mean exactly what did you say? Don't play games, Carlo. I'm not playing games with you. What's on your mind? What I mean is, Frank, uh, you got to be careful. Why? They still think you've got some stuff stashed around here. What do you mean? Like, like uh, tapes and films? Whatever. You gonna rat on me again, Carlo? Look, Frankie, what I'm telling you is for your own good. You gotta be careful, you gotta watch your step. They're trying to get any kind of a reason to send you an invitation back into that peanut room. Better behave myself. said something in court about having tapes and pictures and stuff. No, I just must have been destroyed. You want to close us down, don't you? Mr. Johnson, why would I want to do a thing like that? I like it here. This is my home. I'm going to give you a choice. You tell me where that stuff's hidden, you can walk out of here. You don't. I'm going to give you a shot of spirene and shine my boots on you. Where is it? in the shower. Take care of him, will you? Frank. Frankie. Come on, give me a hand. Oh, the man doesn't 
fool. Look what he's done to himself. Let's just get him out of here. Uh, somebody, come over here. Get his shoulder. Uh, you get his feet. Uh, careful. <coughs> oh, he's bleeding over everything. Easy. Careful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to see what kind of pork grass. See some redwood trees. Work my way down the coast to San Francisco. About a year, two years. I warned him, didn't I? Go see a picture. San Bernardino. Give me some fresh water. Frank, you hear me? Yeah. Hey, listen, you got to take this as a warning. They were just playing around with you this time, kid. You got to be careful. They're going to watch every move you make. I really, I really appreciate the advice, Carla. Yeah, they're still worried about what you got. And if they find out, the same thing's going to happen to you that happened to Mitchell. I won't, I won't die here because I'm going to California. You're going to go where? I have to go to California. Go get my stuff. You can't get out of here. I can get out of here. You can't get, there's only two ways you can get out of here, Frankie. In a pine box the way Jim did. Or with a pass. Without a pass. Only people who would leave this place without a pass are the guards. Right. It's lights out. I gotta beat it. You stay cool, kid. Good night, Carl. Friends of yours out here to see you. You got an appointment? <laughs> How you doing, Frank? Hey, Frank. What's up? Hey, look what I found. Now that'll keep a guy's ears warm on a cold, stormy night. Nice color. Want to sell it? Oh no, no, Frank. I could, I could never do that. I wouldn't want to do that. But uh, you can borrow it if you want to. Well, I don't know when I can get it back to you. Oh, any time. It doesn't matter. Whenever. By the way, Frank, uh, here's that ten bucks I borrowed. You didn't borrow ten bucks. Yeah, he did. No? You must have forgotten. You crazy guys? Not really, Frank. Don't come on to me now. I'm engaged. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. Enjoy it, Frank. Thanks. Anything else you need, kid? No. Just a little good luck and some rotten weather. Let's finish cleaning up in there, huh? I want to get home before that storm really busts loose. 
out of this joint, this would be the right night to do it. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about either. As long as we understand each other. Hey, what are you guys doing to me? Come on, get the lead out, will you? I want to get out of here. Mr. Relay, really, with the storm and everything, I would go get me a pot of coffee for the new shift coming in. Make their own coffee. This ain't no hotel. Well, I'd just like to help them out. Help yourself out. Jeez! Crying out loud, I don't believe it. What'd you do that for? It's an accident. accident. I didn't do it on purpose. You fruitcakes are gonna give me a stroke right in the middle of this stinking kitchen. Come on, Riley, take it easy. Have a cup of coffee. Not for fun. It's gonna take you two hours to get this up. I'm going home. Mr. Morelli, you want me to stay and help him clean that up? Yeah, yeah, help him, help him. Uh, would you would you tell the guard where I am, please? Look, yeah, I'll tell him. And I'm telling you, you get all of that up. Every bit of it, you understand? Yes, Mr. Merlin. Come on. Come on. Well, I greased it up for you, Frankie. I don't know if this is the right night. Yeah, but if you're still here. This time tomorrow, I'm going to spill my guts and tell him everything I know. Frankie, this is my home. It's not yours.
Hey, Jensen. Yeah, I saw your switch. Security's looking for you. They want you to call them as soon as you get in. Yeah, about what? I don't know. Probably a jar across from a lake with it. I guess so. Yeah, got a game going up there? They sure have. They took me to the cleaners. Yeah, not me. I'm feeling lucky. Good night. Good night, Jensen.